Hello all, uh, welcome to um, probably a new set of videos, I'm not sure if they're going to be a new set of videos now, it might just be a one-off thing this, but um, I just want to talk about a subject that's been sort of on my mind at the minute, um, and it's something that I've talked to my students about in class, you know, we, we've discussed this because I think it's important that you that you know what you're getting yourselves into with education, and it's, it's important that we know sort of where the parameters are of what you what you can achieve and what you can't achieve in terms of you know and and, and to to sort of how the system works because i think a lot of the time we don't talk about how education systems work now what i want what i want to talk about what the basic discussion is going to be about today is what is the purpose of education all right and and i know you could do a dissertation on it and i know it's going to be a lot far reaching than anything i'm going to talk about today but i, I want it to be the start of a discussion um, that maybe you can have with 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 colleagues, friends, parents, whoever it is uh, that we're talking about, to 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 kind of get a consensus on whether we think it's correct, whether we agree with it, whether we you know because it's kind of like we've been talking about different schools of thought of motivation and things like that recently on the channel, and I, and I think it's in time that we we get some kind of consensus on what the what we think as a as a people education is for. Okay, so let, let, first let let's start off. Okay, so what. You basically, when you when you start off in education, you, you you don't have a choice about it, do you? Now we're talking about Western, you know, just in the UK. We're talking about you know not not other countries where you have to pay for it and things like that. So we've got a system in this country where you have a legal right and the legal responsibility as a parent to allow your child to have access to education. Now that education can be in a in a you know a specific setting like a school, um, or it can be done in a home, um sort of situation as long as there are certain things which are followed and the specifications and things exams are still followed and things like that now um that does give us a bit of scope doesn't it because there are some people who think that education systems in this country are, so, are purely there to create a workforce to create um you know a, a group of, of not very intelligent people who only um agree with certain things and and it's a difficult one that because i think as me as a teacher um I I can definitely see the stresses and strains of of um, of getting people through exams and, and why it's so important and things like that. But I think that what I try to do as a teacher is I try to teach my students things which um, which aren't on the specification as well, like how to be a good person and you know. Um, you know things about things which are never taught to you, like uh, you know how to apply for a mortgage. What about student finance? You know. Um, what about um you know how to how to manage your, your finances effectively and stuff like that and uh, there are offshoots of things in high schools and things that claim to do these things but the the vast majority when i speak to students is that they come to me with a with a very blinkered view of the world a lot of them have a lot of things paid for them and obviously it'll depend on what what colleges what settings you are in of, of how much you've experienced this teachers will have a, a different opinion than, than maybe students have some some students will be very very well off in which case they're, they're, they're not very they don't see the value of money um for themselves because it's always been given to them on a platter and that's not their fault it's just the way it is and then you've got other students who who are, aren't from very well off places who are having to do x y and z to, to try and complete um the courses but also having to work at the same time and trying to balance those two two things so you you've got you've got people coming from a wide range of backgrounds a wide range of upbringings and there's no real way of um of really being specific to their needs you know you're going to get people who who are are really tired because they've been up on their xbox all night but you're going to get people who are really tired because they can't afford to eat properly and they can't afford to do x y and z and they can't, you know what i mean so it's it's an important one now education in my eyes is there to try and create it um good citizens um, and I know it sounds really like hallmarky and things like that, but I, I genuinely believe that. I think that was the idea that education is there to try and improve the standard of citizens in in a society and to try and get good, um, you know, law abiding people. Now, when I say law abiding, um, I think it was Gandhi who was saying that if you don't if you don't agree with the law, you have a you have a duty to uh, stand up against that law. Um, but only in a peaceful way. You can't break any laws to stand up against a law. I like Gandhi. I think he had a right idea. Um, but anyway, 
she so because that idea is you know you can't you can't if you believe in one thing you can't destroy another belief to try and to try and uh, push that belief forward you know so if you don't believe in killing people um which would be a good rule of thumb wouldn't it um you wouldn't be able to uh, the the ends don't justify the means essentially you wouldn't be able to commit another crime you wouldn't be able to be fraudulent to stop something else uh, because it's 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 about maintaining that standard isn't it it's about maintaining that, those those qualities those those things that we're trying to develop in in people now um education in itself though um, it's changed over the last couple of years, hasn't it? It's definitely changed since the, you know, it used to be, you know, teachers, especially in, in Western thing, teachers are a bit of a joke now. You know, those who can't do teach and, and you know, we're, we're all a bit stupid and, and parents seem to think, of, you know, take it upon themselves to, to just jump to the aid of the of the child all the time because, you know, teachers are like tyrants, aren't they? And, we're, you know, we're all just trying to get away from things. And maybe that comes from, the, the, the it comes from a, a number of places probably, doesn't it, of, of parents feeling feeling like they are inadequate themselves and maybe feeling like that they uh, they don't spend enough time with the kids you know because a lot of the time economic pressures are putting them on they don't spend enough time with the kids and they're trying to replace you know actual time and affection with monetary goods and things like that and that's not their fault so don't beat them up about it because it's not their fault they're just trying to do what they can do you don't know the situations that these people are in so it's no wonder that they jump to the aid of these these kids because if a kid says you if your if your child says something to you then you believe them inherently don't you but i think a lot of the time we don't want to go back to a time when you know teachers are immortal in that regard and you know that they're just um (laughs) believed anyway and you know these horrible things which we've heard about in the press happening because um parents didn't believe the kids and things like that but surely there's got to be um you know a a sort of a middle ground that we should we should sort of get to where we can be respectful of of people um the, the the as we get though so we've got that that issue that's sort of going on at the same time so i think we this moment in time in this country we're sort of seeing education as a bit of uh, childcare as well you know like so just somewhere to get people the government see as you know especially the 16 to 18 year old uh, age bracket with the you know forcing you into education yes they said it was to do with trying to a skills gap and things like that but i think more likely it was to try and get you off the unemployment records realistically um i mean it's good for you and it's good for <laughs> i mean it, so it's a win-win really even if you're that you know if you're cynical like me and you think that they're trying to do it for some weird reason then uh, then that but i think it's important to, to talk about um how education systems work okay so one thing that they never really talked to you about um and one of the things which i i realized uh, i think I, I think i did know it I, I kind of inherently knew it because I think you probably do know it yourself until it's pointed out to you. And then you go, yeah, well, that, I suppose that's the only way it could have worked. But it's still not. A, it's quite a sobering thought. Is how exams work. OK, and so we've got we've got a situation with I said it's about creating good citizens, isn't it? It's trying to create intelligent people. But there seems to be something else at play. Because if we look at education from the sense of um, what what it seems to be now is let's get a, a group of people um, who are all going to have different abilities, different skills, different uh, wants, different needs, different hopes, different dreams. Um, and we're going to put them all in the same situation. We're going to put them all in the same room. We're going to put them all in that same you know confined space. And some of them will just naturally be better at this than others. And then we're going to give them a test, which is the same for everyone. And, we're, and despite every all the external factors, which we spend so much time in business talking about, we're going to ignore, ignore all the external factors, and we're going to um, we're going to tr- try and treat everyone the same and get everybody in the same place doing the same test. All right. Now, a lot of you might say, well. We can't, we can't do it any other way. How would you do it, right? And I'm not saying that I would do it any differently. I'm saying that if you, you know, they, they say, don't they, there's a tree, um, you, you have an elephant and a monkey, and you say, right, okay, climb to the top of the tree. And the elephant goes, well, I can't do that. Um, and you say, well, you should do, you know, you have to work harder. And the monkey just naturally jumps up the tree because they've got a better skill in it. There will naturally be people who are more, um, you know, hardwired to be better academically than others. And there will be some that just don't have an interest in it, but are better at other things. Um, the education system that we've got now, especially as BTEC moves to its next uh, formation, seems to be saying that we're not really interested in creating good citizens. More we're bothered about creating... Um, well, we're kind of, we're, it's a differentiation tool, education. That seems to be what it's changing into. So how do exams work then? Well, if we look at exams in real terms, it, it works something like this. 
Okay. And this is what we call the bell curve. I've shown my students this. I don't know if you've seen it before, but this is how exams work, all right? Now, this is like the ideal bell curve. This is what they're trying to do. So when you go for an exam, you have a, a, a subsection of poor performers, you have a subsection of average performers, and you have a subsection of high performers. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, well, that's okay because we, we figure out the uh, the grade boundaries before the exam and then we'll just judge it off that. But that's not how it works. It's a big con, really. It's not fair when you think about it because what happens is, say everybody in the country did really well on an exam, then what they would do is they would still make this bell curve work. So that means that even if we, we just push it to the right, so that means that if you got if you deserve an A star usually so on an average year but we happen to get an easy exam or we happen to get a particularly uh, you know group of people in the in the year group who are particularly good at something um, doing this you know or something like that you have a, you have a year group who are particularly good at, at business studies or whatever it is then that means that the people who um, you're not just competing with the exam you're also competing with everybody else in the country and there's no way that you can avoid it there's no way that you can you can um, get out of the system in that regard so that means that if you when you did your GCSEs if you did really well that means that someone else didn't do well because of you now think about that for a second so you have actively taken grades off people by having the grades you have you've taken grades off someone else. That's crazy, isn't it? That's a crazy system. I don't understand that system because surely if you have a uh, a person who is good enough to pass the exam, whatever pass the exam it is, then why do we have the poor performers bit? And you know why we have it? Because exams are a way of differentiating between people that's why it doesn't really matter what the exam is when people come to college when people come to school and they think they're being tested on a subject they're not it could be about anything the subject is just what they've chosen to be tested on um it's to differentiate between people and usually in our society as we go what we do is we differentiate with people in terms of these are the kind of people who a small amount of people who are going to do really well and get lots of money. The vast majority of people are going to do okay. And the and, and there's going to be 16% or, you know, a small amount of people who are going to do really badly in life. And, 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 and think about that for a second because we've screwed them, haven't we? That's the system screwed these people. You didn't have a chance. You had no chance because even if you were to really try, you're always going to be taking grades off someone else there's no way that we can all succeed that's not what education's about that's not what exams are about the exa the system is set up to fail people it has to because if we if we passed everyone they would say that the that the exam is worthless there has to be failures that there physically has to be because it's set up to be that now the next question with this is Okay, well, there has to be failures. How do we minimise risk? Well, what colleges and schools do is they try and really make sure that their students are okay. But it's just the same thing that seems to be coming out in society all the time. Now, I, it's all right. You know, I'm all right, isn't it? It's I'm all right all the time. But that's not what education, that's not what teachers were in it for. That's not what we all started to, to, to um, we don't know what we started in education about. We didn't start to try and take grades off people. We didn't try and take part in a system which purposely fails people it's it's quite a sobering thing when you realize what's going on you think wow how lucky am i to have got to the situation that i am so that's not to take um that's not to take credence off people who have really tried that's not to take that it's not to take credence off people who have failed because they didn't do any work but that means that there can be people and there will be people there has to be people that have really worked hard, really tried hard, and they will—they have to fail. It, we, we are going into an exam situation where people have to fail. That—that that doesn't sit right with me. That—that that doesn't seem to, to to sit with my my teacher's ethics in that regard. Nor where did I say that I was going to be involved in a system where I have to fail people. Um, and it, and in terms of me, I don't I don't have to fail people because all my students do do really well but that means that for every student that does well with me that some other student somewhere else is going to fail because of me 
because of because of me being good at my job because of my students being good at this they being a student by us being above average or average then we are pushing someone else out it's crazy isn't it you don't i don't know whether this is a surprise to you but it was a surprise to me when I found out about it. And I try and tell my students that you're not just competing with other people. You can, you're not competing with people in the room. You're not competing with an exam. You're competing with the exam, the people in the room, and everybody else in the uh, in the country. Because if they happen to do well this year, <laughs> sorry. And if they happen to do really badly this year, then... So you really are rolling the dice. And I don't ever want to see education like that. I think it should be based on on your ability, your skill, your the amount of effort that you put in. But it isn't. There's an element of chance. There is because there has to be, <laughs> and and if we didn't, if we didn't have an element of chance, then then this this wouldn't work, would it? So, it, as I said, I don't know why I wanted to do this video today. I I wanted to start a discussion about the nature of education. I believe it's something more than a bell curve. I I think it's more than that. I think that the fact that we've got a system like this and the fact that this is how we treat people, this is how we force people, the, the system's set up to fail people. And it's nothing that colleges can do anything about. It's nothing that that schools can do anything about. It's nothing that teachers can do anything about, but tacitly we are all doing it. We are all we're all being part of it. And you yourself have been part of it and, and probably didn't even realize that's how it worked. I definitely didn't realize at the time. Um, I always say to my students, do you think you are working as hard, harder or less hard than uh, the average student? If you're working less hard, you're going to fail. If you're working averagely, you'll probably do average. And if you're working hard, then you'll probably do better than average. Probably. Because that's all that's that's what the system that we'll, we deal with, isn't it? Um, and as I said, luckily, um, you know, my students are great. I work hard with my students, but that's not the point. That means that you could work really, really hard with your students and they will still fall into that category sometimes. I don't know. I, I think it's a discussion that we need to have, though, and I think it's a discussion that, that's, that, as I said, what is the point of education? Is it to differentiate people? Is it to start us off in a path to, you know, 16% of the, of the uh, you know, the... The population are going to be low achievers, 68% are going to be middle achievers, and 16% of them are going to be high achievers. Is that really what we want to be saying to people? Is that really what the, the sort of the message that we're talking to our, our kids about? Um, I don't know in that regard. That's the system that we have, and, and, it, and it blows me away that we have that system. Um, personally, I see, I see um, education as a currency to buy a better job that education is seen as it's not an ability to do a job or anything like that it's it's a, it's a way of measuring people's worth essentially if, if if you can't use money which a lot of the time we do use education um completely baffles me when when i see students come out and tell me that uh, they're going to jump out or that they've come in with very low qualifications and they don't seem to give one and i know why they don't give one it's because they're 16 and they don't really have any idea what the hell they're doing and i understand that and they'll probably and they'll be deeply offended by me saying that but come on you don't i don't know what i'm doing let alone you know with my life and you, your parents don't know what they're doing with their lives and you know you don't know what you're doing in your life so don't have a go at me about that because it's not realistic to think you do you might have an idea but come on we're all just doing Doing what we can um but people who decide to, to make big decisions and they're already putting themselves in that uh in that that poor performance bit there they're already they're physically moving themselves into that that situation because statistically um you are already off to a bad start aren't you so i don't know it's a, it's a weird one i just felt compelled to make a video today about something and i think it was a good good start um it's a weird one. That's how that you know. That's how exams work, and and I don't know. But yeah, I'd love to hear people's opinions on it. Do you think it's fair? Do you think it's work? You know, is it working? Do you think we've got a society which is which based on you know de genuine skill and ability, or do you think it's based on you know a, a, an element of chance? And and what would you do? Is there any alternative to this? Uh, if you could send me a, send me an email, write me a comment. Uh, I'd love to know what people think about this. Do you think I'm being unreasonable at, at bringing it up? Do you think that did you know? Did you did you know about these things? Um, but anyway, yeah. So uh, I hope you keep well. Um, if I if I think of any uh, anything else I want to talk to you about, I'll speak to you about it. Um, but um, thanks very much for joining me. Peace.